Hey, this is Eric Alper from Replicire, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. Seventy thousand tons of metal. The original, the world's biggest heavy metal cruise. Sixty bands, four days, one cruise ship, only three thousand tickets. From Miami, Florida to Ocho Rio, Jamaica, January thirtieth to February third, twenty twenty-five. Five days and four nights mingling side by side with your favorite artists in this incredible fan-friendly scenario that has no comparison. Go to seventy thousand tons.com and book your ticket now. Give me one second. Where you get? You guys are in Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of us, I am. Is it nice and beautiful up there today? Uh, it's not bad. It was a little chilly this morning, but yeah, it's sixty something, seventy degrees. It's kind of nice. Cause I'm down in Richmond, and it's absolutely stunning. Oh, nice, Richmond, uh, Virginia. Yeah. Cool. Seventy six here. Yeah, I was just looking. Um, uh, yeah, no worries. We we were on uh, we were in Virginia Beach one time early in our career on tour, and uh, the gig uh, canceled I think, but we oh. spent the day on the beach, and that was the first time I had crab legs, and it was really so, oh, wait good. Yes. wait 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 you're from Massachusetts and first time you had seafood or crab legs? Yeah, I'm not really a big seafood guy. I know it's like a Massachusetts thing; everyone's super yeah. into it. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It never really was my thing. But uh, it was a happy hour, which we also don't have. <laughs> There's no happy hour in Massachusetts, so it was like two dollar drinks and cheap crab legs, and I, and it was right. just a great memory. Wow. Yeah, nice. and thank you for rescheduling today too. I'm really sorry that I, I missed our last one. I appreciate you very much. Absolutely, yeah. things happen, and yeah, everything's good. No worries at all. Anyway, let's talk about the band. Um, I'm going to probably butcher the name, so can you give me the name with the accents? Rep- oh, I want to hear you try it. Uh, what you got? All right. Replic- Replicier? Close. That, everyone says that. Uh, Replicire. Replicire. Okay. Yep. Yep. But you were close. You were close. That's good. I've got, we've gotten some funny ones. I got Replicare was the funniest, like a uh, insurance uh, uh, Oh yeah. They, def- <laughs> they definitely, they uh, definitely move things around in there. Cause it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. Replicire, yep. <laughs> anyway. So yeah. listening to the record, um, the center that cannot hold. Yeah. I don't even know where to start. So it's definitely a journey from start to finish. Absolutely mm-hmm. love it. But I can't believe how like technical it is, how extreme it is. Like, was the idea when you sat down to write this record to make the most extreme record you could, or did that just sort of happen? It's funny, yeah, it just sort of happened. Actually, the the idea, the like early, early, the original idea was, I wanted to write a simpler <laughs> album. Oh, yeah. You know, like I remember um, talking with Pohawk, uh, who is you know the other guitarist, of course, and uh, this was um, our first time writing together. Um, and we were th- throwing ideas around, and I was like, dude, I want to write riffs that like the crowd reacts to, and like people can't, you know, like like how Pantera could just control right. the audience, you know. And and he was like, yeah, yeah, cool. And then you know we started doing our thing, and it just got more and more, <laughs> you know, in depth and technical, and um, and it just became what it is. You know, we can't get away from it. But but yeah, no, it was not the intent, but it's where we ended up, I'd say. So I like that. It's I think it's definitely at the more extreme techier side of the even the tech genre but what i like is the mixing of genres right because if i'm if i'm correct i'm hearing some sort of jazz stuff going on i'm hearing like other elements of different genres going on is that i mean obviously that's all intentional but it works so well yeah yeah you know i mean intentional it's it's not like it's not like uh it was the plan but it's just kind of um, just what happened, you know. I, some of the jazz influence would probably be more from Pohawk in, in like his soloing, and some of the chords behind his solos, you know. Um, uh, but definitely, yeah, the mishmash of of genre sort of bending. Um, uh, it, it, I think it just comes out of all of our different influences, you know. And, and um, it's hard to keep us kind of on one track. But but when when we are composing, we we do often say like. Or at least I think to myself, like, does this sound like us? Does this sound like what we're trying to be? Right. You know, so so um uh yeah, that's I guess that's why we kind of fall under the umbrella of the 
progressive progressive technical death metal you know because it kind of yeah. <laughs> touches all the little things no, i, you know? I, I kind of love that stuff i mean you know it's not my usual go-to but when you want to chill out and listen to something you know really technical like that i dig it i was thinking you guys are like uh don't take this the wrong way by any means but i've like cynic comes to mind oh, uh, a heavier it. a heavier sort of cynic or whatever but no, that, that was what was coming to mind in my head and you know i kind of like it's not everyday stuff i don't know that i could listen to it like listen to cynic all the time but yep. when you do it's like you can appreciate it for what it is oh yeah traced in air is one of my favorite albums ever on the planet yeah yeah i mean so and what actually is, uh, the, the last song on the album um uncontrolled and unfulfilled uh the working title for that was cynical idea Oh really? So so it really yeah that that one especially. Um, so I'm not uh, far off in my judgment. Then I'm no, not. you nailed it. You totally nailed that. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, you know, not that it's a copy of it by any means, but that sort of thing. Oh yeah, big time. When you guys are writing, I know you said you kind of write for the stage, like how it some of those riffs are going to hit or whatever. But well, that was gonna, the idea. I don't know how much that really. <laughs> no, I, I think it I think it works. Yeah. But when you're writing, are you writing with any sort of message behind the music or is the music just the music yeah the music came before the lyrics so it's not like we we really had um a specific uh story we were telling with anything um except for the song living hell that one did have intention behind it um because uh our singer james we were on the road one time and uh you know we had a few drinks and we were talking and he told me this really crazy story um that happened to him where um uh i don't want to share too much of it because i don't know how personal it is to him right. or whatever but 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 basically like he witnessed this really bad thing this really traumatic thing and then he had this experience of like of like sleep paralysis but like was visited by like a demon sort of thing and you know and it was so like extreme and scary for him and, and he described the whole story to me and really vivid detail and, it, and it's like right. and and i was like dude can um you know i thought about it for a couple of days i was like could we maybe use that like yeah that's a great thing to pull lyrics from you know what i mean right. and he was like yeah oh yeah i'm down so so that one song um we did i told all the guys that that and and um the main theme of that riff the bow down 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 that was kind of i was like this that sounds right to me and we, we jumped off of that um so that was the one that we were telling a story with the rest were just kind of like riffs that we thought sounded good felt good you know and right. moved along nicely yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and say what is repless sire what is their writing process like are you guys all in the same room like the traditional sense or are you taking advantage of technology and you're sending shit back and forth yeah well we had to do that because we were writing during covid so uh, so we were doing a lot of um uh sending stuff back and forth you know getting on zoom calls and and you know kind of composing stuff and listening to it and everything but um when things settled back down um we we would get together it would be um uh zach the bass player uh joey our drummer and pohawk the other guitarist and myself and we'd get together over at pohawk's place and he would be sitting at the computer he produced all the demos um so basically uh we were kind of all funneling through him you know like uh right. like i'd have a riff idea or something he'd, he'd take it take it further than than i could he's such an right. accomplished player you know he, he really did a, a lot of the composing and i was sort of over his shoulder you know like do it now do this now right. add that now now do that you know and and um he he took the reins really heavily for that but yeah everybody was was inputting um it was a lot of pohawk a lot of myself you know the guitarists usually how it goes writing the things and you know but one song um got kicked off by zach he wrote a bass riff and that led us through the whole rest of the song um another one joey came up with a with a drum thing and we kind of followed his hits and then went from there so definitely everybody can and then of course lyrics were after right. and uh james uh was was doing his thing sending me stuff i was sending him notes back we'd, we'd get on calls like this and i'd kind of whisper track stuff you know to like ideas right. for him and then we did a lot a lot of the vocals in the studio were composed um in real time as well okay yeah so do you ever feel like something is missing doing a record that way i mean this record sounds great and i'm not taking from it but that old sense of getting in the room and bouncing ideas off of you do you think that's missing and how do you compensate for that because that is a thing right yeah no it is definitely um and and, and the previous two records there was a lot of that 
you know, we, we just didn't have a practice space this go around. Right. Um, no, no, but, no, I get it. But, yeah, but how do you but, adjust for that, right? Because that is a, I think that's a thing when you can like organically bounce stuff off each other or whatever. It is, it is for sure. Um, uh, but, but also it, it was always difficult when we were doing, uh, um, let's call it la loud, <laughs> loud composing, you know, full oh, right, the stack right, right. The drums, um, where it'd be like, it'd be like, wait, what exactly is that? And then, and then, and then, and then you got to play it slow and then the other guy's got to learn it. And then you got to try. So there was, it was kind of a longer process. So this was actually, I feel like a bit more streamlined, you know, because we right. could put it right into the DAW and, and, right. you know, chop it up or, or whatever, and just like see all the parts in real time. And, 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 you know, even on the previous two, we did do a combination. We would, um, maybe come up with a riff or two in practice and then go sit down together. Right. Uh, Steve was a guitarist at the time. Steve and I would sit down and, um, and we would work it out, uh, you know, at like bedroom levels. Right. right? Um, but this was, this was all, all, uh, yeah. And I'm not taking anything away from the record. Cause I started off by saying absolutely, you know, love oh, no, it, I don't take any I'm just curious that. because That's I think, it. you know, things have changed and you have to learn to adapt in order to, you know, yeah. release stuff. But I'm just curious. Yeah, maybe maybe we would have ended up with with um, some sim more simple things, you know, if if we did have access to like kind of oh, because you had time hey, you know, too, right? Yeah, because you had nothing but time, so you could experiment. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So so you know, um, yeah, it it came it came out um, fine just by doing that, and um, we we spent a lot of time composing, like a right. lot of time. We would um. It comes slow for us, you know. That's why it, it took so many years from the previous record. Is like, like, um, man, just like so many hours go into so many seconds, <laughs> you know, of right. composition. Like we, we would we would do a whole weeks. We call them grind weeks, where I would clear my schedule and uh, and Pohawk would clear his, and, and we'd be be together for you know ten hour, twelve hour days for a week. And the other guys, you know, would, would be there as much as they could. They come and go as they had to for work or whatever. Right. Um, but even then it's like if we finished a song or got close to the end of a song, that was great. And it's like, you know, what, sixty hours, <laughs> you know? So, so how do you know when a song is is finished for you then? Um, it's a it's a feeling. You know, like like we really spent a lot of time on, on the arrangements. Um, we we didn't want it to be uh, linear or just like riff sandwich, you know, part, 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 part. We really spent a lot of time, you know, trying to figure out good transitions. Like does, does this, you know, um, um, complement where it just came from and does it lead us somewhere to, to where it's going? And, and usually by the time we could get through like what felt like a beginning and, and then a middle and then near the end, if we could loop back something that felt final and complete without being forced, Usually right. it was like we were like, oh yeah, that that's it right there. That's done, right. you know. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. How hard is it to replicate a Replicire record on stage? Because there's a shitload going on. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's not as hard as as you think, you know. Um, we're, we're all not to sound like egotistical. We're all pretty accomplished players, right? You know, so so we can we can play the notes. Um, it's more like uh, honestly the overhead of uh, getting everybody together and getting a practice space and stuff because a few of the guys are out of state. And uh, just putting the time into rehearsing, you know, everybody can do right. it on their own, but but getting together is is, a, is another thing. So it's not like we have like over the top production where there's you know strings and whatever, no, no, you know, you know, right. it's, it's guitars, bass, drums, vocals, you know, like that. That's very very easily um, done with the band in the room. Uh, Playing to a click, I'm guessing. Yeah, we do. Yeah, when when we because we also had this cool light show um, that was uh, programmed through Ableton, so our drummer would be on the click track. Yeah, he'd hit it off, count him in, he'd count us in, and then we'd just be playing to him. But he'd be he'd be on the click, right on the money. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. yeah. I think with this stuff, there's no way you let this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially take this by yeah, chance, it's, some of it's yeah. Fast too. So if we speed up, it's like <laughs> and then stop on a dime, right? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. What's the plan to take this out on the road then? Now that we just said it's quite difficult, is that a thing? Yeah, no, probably not. You know, it's it doesn't really seem doable, which is unfortunate because we've gotten a lot of positive feedback on the record and we'd probably be able to play some pretty cool shows, but um, the unfortunate state of things is that there's really not a lot of money in, <laughs> in uh, weird-ass death metal. So, yeah. you know, just, just sinking, sinking the, the, the dollars into it, you know? So, to be fair, it's mm -hmm. not just weird-ass death metal if there's not a lot of money in right? I think it's most of the... Unless you're, you know, the Taylor Swifts and the Foo Fighters of the business. 
there's no money. I talk to people all the time, and yeah, you know, everybody's saying the same thing. It doesn't really make sense to hit the road or yeah, or take this on the road sad. because we'll lose our shirt. And it is sad because the stuff needs to get out there. Yeah, and and I love playing shows. Like that's I live for that. You know, being on stage, I feel the most the most uh, aligned with with myself. And uh, um, you know, it's it's a uh, right before. So when the previous record came out, um, uh, do not deviate. Uh, we were primed, like, you know, rehearsal space, set, all the guys in the same state, set, right. uh, a, a, a van bus thing with bunk beds, you know, a trailer, you know, like, we were, like, right. primed, ready to go, and then I had guys quit. So then I didn't have the band members, you know? <laughs> so then I had to put right. the band back together, get all rehearsing, get, okay, get on the road a little bit. Okay, and then, you know, COVID hits, and then I'm, I'm paying insurance on, on the vehicles that I'm not, so we sell right. them, and then I got to move, and it's like, ah, oh, not every, like, there's always one little variable or yeah. there that keep it from going, and it's just the, you know, just, uh, I mean, woe is me, right? But it's... Uh, no, it's just, but I think it also says something that you're in it for the the art and the music and the passion and not in it to try and make a buck because obviously you're not making much on a repl side yeah, of records and it anyway, would be great right? That if it could sure. at least like propel itself, you know, in that sense. Right. Um, but uh, uh, at the very least, you know, we can at least make, make records, you know, like I'm very fortunate that I, that I produce for a living. So I have access to a studio. Right. And, you know, as, as long as we want to compose, we can compose and we can record. Good therapy, we can put right? Records out Super and, cathartic. Yeah, and I hope that you know. I love listening to records. I honestly don't even go to shows that much anymore. Um, right. It's a whole lot of headphones and car speakers, you know. Like yeah. that's how I enjoy music these days. So maybe there's people out there that can just you know get into it and enjoy it for what it is. And and uh, uh, as as much as I'd love to play shows, you know, that's that's what we got. <laughs> Was there ever a talk of this might? Maybe I'm out of line here, but this might be something like a Zoom, not a Zoom, but what they used to do, live streams. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we have discussed that. Yeah, we, we thought it might be cool to do like some playthroughs or yeah, yeah. Uh, some Twitch streaming or something. And, and we did. I was couple. thinking like the Twitch stuff or, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we, we've been kicking that idea around. So so maybe maybe something. Maybe something like that. We had a really goofy idea. I don't think we're going to do it, but we thought it'd be funny if we uh, picked one of the harder songs. Like me, me and Poe played it. Right. But every time we played it, we had to like chug a beer, and then just see how many times <laughs> right. we get through it before it starts to fall apart. Nice. That's <laughs> so, a good idea. Funny idea, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that brings me to uh, my questions. Um, yeah. Did I miss anything you wanted to cover? Uh, no, no. Go ahead. What, what do you got for a question? So no, that's gonna bring me to the end of what I had. Uh, what I want to know is um, where can people find you? Because I think more people need to find you. So give me just. Give us your socials and all that kind of stuff. Oh, totally. Yeah. So, you know, Replisire on Instagram is probably where we're most active. Of course, it's on Facebook, too. Um, but you can stream the, the album on Spotify, um, Apple Music, Amazon. It's everywhere. You know, everywhere that you listen to music, it should be there. Um, if you want the physical copy, uh, you can get it from our Bandcamp um, and right from the Season of Mist site, which is our label. And I think they might have it at Newbury Comics, too, if you like going to record oh, nice. stores. If that's a, uh, do you guys have Newbury Comics? That's a chain, right? Or is that just a New England? That's a chain. I don't have one in here, but I used to yeah. live in New York, and I've seen mm -hmm. them there before. So, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, 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 when I said that, I was like, oh, maybe that's not everywhere, but I don't know. No, not so, here. And, yeah, it might be in some, some stores. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, that's, that's you know. And Replicire, R-E-P-L-A-C-I-R-E. -E. I know it's a weird name, but <laughs> phonetic, mm. Replicire. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfect, Eric. I'm glad we finally made that work out. Thank you for yeah. being persistent, taking the time. Appreciate oh, it. Oh, I appreciate you very much, man. Thanks, thanks for doing this with yeah, me. Yeah, I hope that wasn't oh, too yeah, bad. I, I kind of wandered. I misunderstood what you said before. I thought I thought you were about to do another. No, question. no, no. I get you. Like yeah, that. no worries. <laughs> yeah. Did um. Shoot, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah, yeah, I totally really dig the record. So. Thanks, man. I, that means a lot. Yeah. I appreciate that. And I wasn't trying. Hopefully, I was glad you weren't insulted about the cynic come. Cynic no, no, not at all. Not, they're on season of Miss too. Actually, they're our label mates. Yeah, yeah. I got mm -hmm. to see them two years ago on seventy thousand tons of metal. I saw them twice. Oh, cool! You went on. I've heard that's a fun. Uh, I've been on every year. I I do yeah. my podcast on it. I've been on since uh, two thousand eleven. Nice, nice. Yeah, we do I live podcasts in one of the lounges all day. That's long. super cool. And there's music yeah. all day, right? Like it starts like it's it starts at. <laughs> Starts at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. and I think the last show starts at four, so it's quiet between like five and ten in oh, four cool. theaters. Wow! Yeah, That's so wild. it's going on everywhere all the time. 
Yeah, and is is the is it a cool cruise ship? Like, is there usual? It's the Royal Caribbean. It's one of their bigger ones, the Majesty oh. of the Sea. Three thousand wow. people. Yeah, wow. they they drain the pool out back. Yeah, and they put a platform on it, so it's like a festival stage. Oh, cool. <laughs> and then they get rid of the skating rink and they put a stage there. There's four four theaters total. Yeah, you know, from smaller to the great big festival, and, and everybody plays twice. Once oh. going to the island and once coming back. What's Got really it. cool is most people make deals to play like classic records of theirs or stuff they haven't ever played or you know weird special and sets special. and it actually turns out great. That's I love rad. it. I got to go one year. I, I think about it every time, but uh, I just haven't pulled the trigger on it. Yeah, I think it's kind of uh, pricey, but yeah, That's but it's well worth every cent of it if you can do it because it's absolutely amazing. I've I've only heard good things. Yeah, yeah, it's it's wonderful. Very but cool. anyway, we didn't come here to talk about that. Thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah. I appreciate it. Be yeah, I well. appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Hey, cheers. All Bye. right, cheers. Take care.